In today's video tutorial, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create ourselves this rustic looking cafe logo. Before we get started today, there's a few bits and pieces we need to download off the internet. Uh, the first one is this coffee cup icon. Second one is the font that we've used. And the third thing is the textured background. So let me show you quickly where I got those from. The font comes from dafont.com. I'll post a link in the description to Cafeta. Okay, it's a free font. Just click the download button over here and install it once it's downloaded. The other things you're going to need come from Heritage Type Co. Okay, the first one is the Coffee House Illustration Set. So for, so for 32 bucks, you get yourself access to all these illustrations that relate to coffee shops. The one that we're going to be using is this coffee cup here, but if you want to use something else in your logo, well, you've got all these that you have access to. Some other things that come in this pack are all these different logos. Now these logos are editable, so you can put your own colors, your own text, your own pictures in there if you want. And I think for 32 bucks, rather than going out and hiring a graphic designer or spending your own time trying to make a logo look good, why don't you just use one of these? They're all made up for you. All you have to do is change the text and you're done. Okay, so much cheaper than hiring a graphic designer. And as you can see, these logos are super high quality, so they print out very nicely onto different products. You also get a few stains and splashes thrown in the mix there as well. They're a bit ugly, so I don't use them, but these illustrations, yeah, they're fantastic for that rustic kind of look. Um, the other thing you need to get from Heritage Type Co. is a freebie. All you need to do is go down the bottom of the page and sign up to their newsletter. And when you sign up, you get access to, I think, about seven different downloads, or seven different packs that you can download. And one of those packs is the textured paper backgrounds, and that's what we're going to be using today. Okay, so once you've got all those bits and pieces downloaded, make sure they're saved in a folder somewhere. So there's the coffee cup I'm going to be using from the illustration set that I downloaded. There's the um, font cafeta, and there's the textured background there that we're going to be using also from the freebie downloads on Heritage Typeco. Okay, when you're ready to get going, head over to Photoshop. Click the Create New button and choose the Print Template from up the top. Now I'm going to be working in pixels today. Um, I'm not overly fussed on the size. Just make sure it's a reasonable size. I'm going to go 2000 by 2000. That's fairly high quality. Resolution should be 300 pixels per inch. Color mode, CMYK. Everything else is good, so click on Create. And you'll get a white canvas on the screen ready for you to design your logo. Now the first thing we're going to chuck in today is that textured background. So I'm going to go over to my folder here where I have it saved and simply pick it up and drag it and then drop it onto my canvas. So it comes out a little bit skinny so you'll need to hold shift and using your selection tool just give it a resize. If you hold alt at the same time it will resize from both ends. Okay so that looks pretty good. Hit the tick at the top when you're done. And I would go and delete this background layer now. So click on the background layer and just trash it. And the textured background here now is our only layer. So let's lock that into position. We're hitting that padlock. And now we can no longer move it or edit it. So that is our background. Okay, it looks good. Next thing I want to do is draw a couple of circles onto the page to start the shape of our logo. So to grab circles, you need to... Click down here on your rectangle tool, hold your mouse down and grab the ellipse tool. Now the colors you want, you want to turn your fill off. So go up the top here and make sure your fill's turned off. And the stroke, looks like it's already set, but just so you know, I hit that little color box there and typed in down here. Actually this is a little bit different, it's 05566A. It's this kind of turquoisey, whatever color that is. Um, and you want to set the size of the stroke to 20 pixels. Okay, just holding shift, simply draw a circle onto the page like so. Using your um, move tool up here, you can click on this and use your pink guides to get that smack bang in the center like so. I'm then going to go to edit and copy while that is still selected. I'm going to copy that circle. And then I'm going to go down to paste special and paste in place. And that pastes another circle right on top. And I'm going to hold Alt and Shift and just make this a little bit bigger. So we've got two circles now, very close to each other. Hit the tick. Now this bigger circle, we want to, we want to change the color of that. So I'm going to go to this little box here, which is the Properties box. 
and I'm going to choose a different color. I'm going to go to the color wheel here, and I'm going to I'm going to set it to a brown color. I found one before that looked good. It was 6B442C. Click OK once you've got that. And we've now got the outside of our circle looking good. So that's a pretty good shape for our logo. Now make sure you've got a bit of room around the sides because we are going to put some text in in a moment that goes straight over the top of um, those circles. So let's do that now actually. Grab our text tool type tool, whatever you want to call it, and just click anywhere on the page. Now we're going to change our color to this blue color on the circle here. So I'm just going to use my dropper tool, my eye dropper, to click on that blue, and it will select that blue we chose before. Now the font we are using was called Feeder Regular, and we're just going to write the words low ground in capital letters. That's going to be a bit hard to see, so I better move that down here. And that's almost the right size. I could probably go a little bit bigger though. I wanted to overlap those circles just a little bit more. So uh, we might go up 110. That's not a bad size right there actually. So I'll get that centered on the page using my guides as a bit of a helping hand. That's about the center there. There. So that's roughly the center. That doesn't look too bad. Now what we want to do is we want to cut out the parts of the circle where the text overlaps it. So I'm going to use my selection tool to do that. So it's my rectangular marquee tool. I'm simply going to draw a box around low ground like so. Not too much bigger than the actual text, but just a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to go over to the ellipse layers here. Now before I can cut them out, I need to just right click on both of them and just rasterize the layers. So both of those ellipses, right click on the layers and rasterize them. Now that they're rasterized, as long as I'm clicked on the ellipse layer, I can press delete and it will delete whatever's inside this bounding box. So if I press delete now, you can see the brown circle just disappeared. If I go and click on this other ellipse layer, we're on the blue circle now and it will just delete the blue circle if I press delete on my keyboard. If I go to select and deselect, it will get rid of that bounding box. And you can see now our text is a lot easier to read now that those um, sides have been cut out. So that doesn't look too bad. Next thing I'm going to add in is a little bit more text. So grab my text tool or type tool again. I'm going to write the word cafe in capital letters. This is going to come underneath the words low ground. Now that text is um, way too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Um, try, oops, to highlight that first. Size, oh, size 50 is not too bad. We'll go with size 50 to start with. We might go a little bit smaller in a sec, but we'll get that right in the center. Now, from my properties, we're going to change the tracking. That's this number here. It's the space between each letter. I want this pretty big. 200 is not going to cut. I'm going to bump it up to 500. There we go, that looks pretty good. You can see the letters now have fully spaced out. That's pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So low ground cafe, yeah, that looks nice. The next thing we might do is we will stick in the little picture of the coffee cup. It goes up there. So that's this one here, asset number eight it was from our illustration pack. I'm just going to drag it over and drop it in. And it comes out a reasonable size. It is a PNG file too, so it's transparent, which is very handy. Holding Shift and Alt, I'm just going to resize that down, let's say about that size. Keeping it fully centered for the now. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, not too bad. Now I want to change the color of this. So the way we change the color of it is we go over here to the layer that it's on. It's called Asset 8 at the moment. I might call it Cup, just so you know what it is. Oops. And all you need to do is double click in this empty space over here next to the name of the layer and your layer style box will appear. We just want to choose a color overlay and we're going to change the color here to that brown that we used on that other circle. So I'm just going to come out and click on the brown and you'll see that it's been selected. So now I've got our brown coffee cup. We can click OK. All right, so that's looking good. 
I'm going to put in some more text now, just some small text, and it's going to be that brown color as well. So I'm going to write the text in first. It says EST dot, and I'm going to grab my properties and change that tracking there. I might drop it back to 200, I'd say. Doesn't look too bad. Now the color, change the color there to that brown that I was just talking about. And the size, oh, it can be a lot smaller, maybe size 20, I'm thinking. So you can pick that up now, I'll zoom in a bit here so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Pick that up, and I'm going to get it to sit well, pretty much level with that blue circle. And I'm going to hold shift and go one, two, three, four, five. So I've moved it five spaces in from that blue circle. I can then copy that. And I'm going to paste in place and move straight across to the other side. So it's just touching that next blue circle. Now this text is going to say 2020. So established 2020. It's a little bit big, so I'll nudge that across now. As it's just touching that blue circle, hold shift, press your left arrow key one, two, three, four, five times. So they're pretty evenly spaced. I might be able to move them in a bit closer. They seem a little bit far apart still. Okay, that looks pretty good. So established 2020. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some text just following the path of a circle that goes over the top and the bottom of the logo. So at the top we're going to write locally owned and follow the path of that circle. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool uh, I'm just going to put a fill color on, doesn't matter what color, stroke I'll just turn off. And I'm just going to hold shift and drag out a circle. Now I want this circle to be just a little bit smaller than those other circles, but I want it smack bang in the center. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. That looks pretty good. So you can see my circle is a little bit smaller than our two existing circles. And with this circle here, I'm going to grab my type tool. And I'm going to simply click on this path. It's a bit hard to see, but if I zoom in, you'll see my mouse cursor changes as I hover over this path. Now I want to click right on that dot at the top, so it's right in the center. And you'll see some sample text will appear on that circle, showing you what it's going to look like. So in capital letters, we're going to write locally owned. And then we're going to highlight it, and we're going to put some tracking in again. We're probably going to go, we'll try 500 and see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so locally owned, 500 pixels, not bad. I'm just going to move this circle out of the way for a moment. And we're just going to nudge this text around using our arrow keys to try and get it in a fairly nice position at the top of the page like so. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring that circle back now and put it right over the center again. Just use your Guides is a bit of a helping hand, so you know when you've got the center. And zooming in, what we're going to do is we're going to put some text around the bottom this time. Okay, so we're going to click on that circle. You'll need to do it right in the middle at the bottom. And the text this time is going to say Coffee House. And that's not in capitals, of course, so I'll have to go back and write that in capitals. And then I'm going to use my white arrow tool here to pick that text up and flip it around onto the other side of the circle. So you just pick it up and drag it and get that roughly in the center. So somewhere like there looks pretty good. So you can delete that yellow circle now. It's no longer needed. Just click on it and press delete. And you can see you've got Coffee House coming in around the bottom. Now one thing I want to put around the words Coffee House and Locally Owned are a couple little dots. I'll show you what I mean by that. They're actually called glyphs in Photoshop. So you need to go to your window menu and select glyphs. They're like special characters. Um, so if you go through here, all the different characters you can use with this Kafita font. We're going right to the bottom. We're going to use this little dot here. So before the word coffee and coffee house, I'll put a dot. You have to double click on it. You can see it put one in just here. If you can copy that. Uh, I'm just going to have to use my mouse cursor to go over there, double click, whoops, put in two. 
That looks pretty good. Sorry, a little bit mucking around there, but just a dot at the start and the end. And I might do the same up here for locally owned. Just press the tick for that bottom one, and there we go. Get in there. Go to our glyphs panel again and double click on the little dot. Go to the end and double click on the dot. Press the tick to accept those changes. And that looks pretty nice. So if I press Control zero to zoom back and have a good look at that logo, I'm pretty happy with how that has turned out. Okay, you can always apply your own adjustments to it, but I think for now that is a fairly looking, a fairly good looking rustic logo. So when you're saving that, just go to your file menu and I always save it as a PSD file first. Okay, so you want to call this rustic cafe logo. Save as a PSD file first. What that does, it saves it as a Photoshop document file and it will retain all these layers over here. So if you need to come back in and edit this, or change the text or the colors or whatever, you've got all your layers that you can work with. Now the other way to save it, there's a few ways you could do it, I guess. Go to save as, and if you're going to use it, say, on the web, um, you can save it as a JPEG image or probably a PNG file, so a ping file. You need to go to file and export for that one. Export as. Oh, here we go. This is the box coming up. And yeah, you want to save as a PNG or a ping file, I would say. One of those two, ping or JPEG, is fine. I'd go J uh, sorry, a ping file or PNG file and click export. Okay, so save that wherever you need to. And that's it. You are done.